Hello and welcome to this special HBM's Crypto Corner editorial. <clears throat> Charles Edson, BSer or genuine Bigfoot experiencer? A lot of people today, especially your modern Sasquatch researchers, may not even know who Charles Edson is. I didn't know who he was until 1994 when I saw a program called Those Incredible Animals, which featured MASH star Loretta Swit as the host. Individual, th there was a Bigfoot segment, and the individual that was profiled was a fellow named Charles Edson. I didn't know a whole lot about him. I never even heard of him. I never even read about him in any of, any of the Bigfoot books I'd read. I wasn't familiar with him. But he allegedly had these films of Bigfoot taken, I imagine, in California. Supposedly taken in 1962, five years before the Patterson-Gimlin film. Now, I'm going to let y'all take a look at this video of Charles Edson, which will include some of his films of, of supposed Bigfoot. This is on Todd Prescott's channel, the Sasquatch Archives TV. By subscribing and leaving comments. This is the segment that I was talking about, which was featured on that Those Incredible Animals. is a Bigfoot hunter. For 17 years, he has been on the trail of the creature known as Sasquatch. Not only does he claim to have had many <coughs> encounters with the thing, but he has taken motion pictures and made plaster casts of what he believes are its footprints. His wife, Ruth, goes with him to set up camp and... Uh, they got the name of his wife wrong. His wife's name is Ruby, not Ruth. Read his book, My Travels with Bigfoot. That tells you his wife's real name, which is Ruby, not Ruth. So I think they got that wrong. ...support the searches, but she admits she's too afraid to spend two weeks at a time hiking any deeper into the wilderness with her husband. Back in 1952 is when I started out hunting Bigfoot. Uh, I was just hunting like a normal hunter does. He goes out in the woods and hunts his game, deer. I hunted a lot of cougar and bear, and then I run onto these tracks, large tracks uh, that were, at the time, about 18 inches long, and that kind of fascinated me, and I thought it was a hoax. After two years hunting these tracks, it, it made a believer out of me. If you've seen a photograph or a motion picture of Bigfoot, chances are it was the one released in 1967 by Californian Roger Patterson. The film you are about to see... That's another thing they got wrong. They said Roger Patterson was a Californian. No, he was from Yakima, Washington. He wasn't a, he wasn't a Californian. He was originally born in South Dakota. So he was not a Californian. So that's another thing they got wrong on this report. He, to our knowledge, has never before been broadcast. Okay, I have a question about this. You saw that the creature was just standing still and seemingly going back and forth. Would a real Bigfoot actually do that? A real Sasquatch would not do that. A real wild animal would not do that. 
makes me question Charles Edson's films. Charles Edson says he took it 17 years ago. Why has he kept it secret for that long? Well, he explains... Okay, this report is from 1979, so that would have been 1962, as I mentioned. Five years before the Patterson-Gimlin film. ...that he feared that kind of publicity would have filled the forest with amateur Bigfoot hunters and ruined his chances to further study the animal. But, since he has been unable to find the creature in recent years, unable to get any new evidence, footprints, patches of hair, or reports of other sightings, he's decided it's time to let the public in on his search, in the hopes that others will share information. So he's given us this film. I used to be real scared. When I first started hunting them, I carried a weapon, even with me a gun. Found out probably that's why I never did see them as many times. So I quit carrying that when I got more used to it. I'm out there to, to see what makes it tick. And uh, it hadn't hurt me yet, and I know it won't hurt me now. Are there many other people who share stories? Do you have a sort of a loose network of other people who've cited it? I, I talk to a lot of people. A lot of people know me, and they'll come up to me in, in a QT kind of a way and, and tell me something that they've seen. And they're real serious, they're not joking because, you know, they know I'm not out for a joking hunt. I'm out there looking for this thing. And, uh, but they won't tell anybody else? No, afraid of being laughed at. And that's, a, that's the trouble of the whole thing. That's why we're not gaining any response you know from people so we can learn anything because people are scared to talk to each other and they're afraid of being laughed at if bigfoot is so big and lives in california with all of its logging and growing population of hikers and campers why haven't more people cited it charles edson says the creature exudes an overpoweringly bad odor which effectively discourages humans from approaching this also would account for wild animals leaving it alone well, surely we would run across the bones or the hides of dead Bigfoots. Charlie replies that bears and mountain lions die all the time, too. Yet their remains are practically never seen, and they are more populous than Bigfoot. Furthermore, Edson's Bigfoot is too clever to be visible. It has such a keen sense of smell, it can detect metal, lumberjacks, axes, guns, and cameras. It hates noise and will remain far from logging crews or automobiles. And there's no such thing as a Sasquatch nest either. Being vegetarians, they are constantly... Okay, if it will remain far from logging crews, I have a question about that because in Charles Edson's book, he claims that a Sasquatch battered his truck while he was on a logging job. So if they stay away from logging crews then why was his truck battered by, supposedly battered by a Sasquatch? If they stay away from logging crews, as is claimed. You can't have it both ways. They either stay away from logging crews or they come up to them. And besides, what about the footprints that were found by Jerry Crew in 1958? Assuming those weren't made by Ray Wallace, which... There's about a 50-50 chance they weren't made by Wallace. Or maybe they were. So, which is it? I mean, do they stay away from logging crews or do they go to them? I mean, th this is what makes me a bit dubious of Charles Edson, to be quite honest. On the move, foraging. Uh, there's no evidence around. They're just moving. They don't stay in one place very long. But I have found uh, uh, traces of uh, moss and sap. This is what I think they get to keep warm in the winter by using moss. The north side of the tree, nature put moss on the north side of the tree to keep that side of the tree warm. They discovered this way to, in the old ancient way of uh, keeping warm. They used moss on, over their hair to stuck it to their hair with the sap. Now, I never heard of that until I saw this report. And I never heard of anybody seeing a Sasquatch with moss stuck to it either. So, is this more BS from Edson? Or is this something that only he observed? 
Has anyone else observed it? That's what I'm. That's what I'm curious about. I've never read or heard of anybody observing that, other than Edson. So that seems to be a bit something more dubious from Edson, I think, because I never heard of it or read about it in any other report. He knows how to uh, uh, scream. He knows how to bounce that noise off a side of a hill or a, or a rock. So a uh, person or uh, whoever, maybe an animal, that's how they scare their uh, other predators away. And uh, the smell, there's no animals around every time this creature's in, in the area. I mean around for uh, maybe a mile in the radius because of the smell. And I think that's one reason uh, that it does have a smell. Like a skunk, they, they have a way to let that smell go and scare off something they don't like. It's a defense mechanism. Yeah, right. Now, there have been some people from time to time who have been reported uh, saying such things as, uh, I'll shoot it if I see it, and there have been people actually who have tried to capture it. What do you feel about that type of uh, attitude toward the creature? I don't think anybody will ever capture it. Uh, he can maneuver better up in, in, the, in the tall timber and rocks and stuff than we. He knows uh, the boulevards up there better than we know ours. And, uh, but, uh, and, and there's something mysterious about this creature that I have not been able to explain to myself. The thing can detect you before you're in the area. And uh, I don't know. It, it, it's, it's smarter than we are in that sense. Now you say you may sometimes spend a week way out in true wilderness in the middle of nowhere. Where do you get maps or charts for places like these? No, you don't. You go without any any right. map or anything? Well, I don't. Most you got people, a compass? No. Uh, most Wait. people do, but I don't. <laughs> no compass, no map? No, it's just something else you have to carry. What I about a hatchet, it. maybe? No, I don't carry a hatchet even. I carry a little pocket knife. Well, we didn't see any sign of Bigfoot when Evening Magazine went on a hunt with this woodsman. We do not even know that the creature exists. But we do know that this is one heck of a woodsman. Part Indian, with an iron constitution, there's no doubt that he could survive weeks in the wilderness. And we do know that Charles Edson will probably spend the rest of his life out there in search of Bigfoot. Okay, that's it for that video. Hope you guys enjoy that. Now that was Edson in 1979, the same year his book was released. So this may have been before or after the book came out. I'm not really sure. There's no date as to when this actually was released, when this was broadcast. But there are quite a few dubious statements from Edson in that report. So, I, <laughs> I think there's a little bit of BS go BSing going on, to be quite honest, from Edson. Another claim he made in his book was that he and a fellow named Red Collier were in the Bluff Creek area 
when Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin were riding into the area, and only those two. So, allegedly, Edson and this fellow Collier, supposedly, they were hiding in the bushes, and they said that they saw two horsemen riding through the area. And that was on October 20th, 1967. Or so it's claimed by Edson. Page 72, fourth excerpt from Siskiyou County Sheriff Charlie Edson's book, My Travels with Bigfoot, A True Life Odyssey. This outtake has to do with no third person in Bluff Creek, October 20th, 1967. Now, there's no way to independently verify this. There's no photographs of Edson in that area or Red Collier. But, I don't know, he claimed... He claimed that he and this Red Collier fellow were in the Bluff Creek area. Again, it, it can't be, it, not, it cannot be independently verified because Charles Edson passed away October 11th, 1999. I would imagine that Red Collier is also no longer with us. So, is this story true? I have to wonder about that. I'm going to say it's, it could be more of Essence B.S., but it could also be a true story. We don't know, and most likely, we will never know, to be quite honest. Speaking of that book, here is Daniel Perez's page about the book on his BigfootTimes.net website. Individual made a comment in 2020. I personally knew Charles Edson, wife Ruby, and their two sons. They were very close to my father and mother, and we spent a lot of time in Happy Camp, California with them. I still have his original book in my hand right now. Charles was an amazing person, as the rest of his family. They all had experiences with Bigfoot. I remember a lot of st stories as a child. The original price of the copy I have was three ninety-five. I see Amazon has it for one hundred fourteen seventy-nine or so. Charles did not BS. It was all factual. <laughs> I, I know. I, I don't know about that. I, I, I'm, I'm dubious. Very dubious. Unknown Comet 2020. As per the late Warren Thompson, who knew Charlie Edson personally, he was a creative Bigfooter. Now, what does that actually mean? You can take from that what you will, I suppose. This book is very hard to come by, and it is my guess much of the information in this book is not factual. Now, I do have a copy of the book. I got it from eBay back in 2021. I don't remember how much I paid for it. It wasn't very much. I can, I, I, I can attest to that. And this is the back cover showing Edson. Active in the logging business, this one-time deputy sheriff of Siskiyou County first sighted the king, Maru Carrera, the Indian name for the giant mountain creature, as he hunted and trapped in the Northern California mountains. Married, father of two sons, Edson still hunts and checks out most Bigfoot stories, hopes to build a Bigfoot museum. And here's his signature. Now, my copy is also... Well, I guess, signed by Edson. This is, of course, the cover right here. I'm actually rereading the book right now for the second time. I've read the book twice already. 
I'm actually rereading it for the second time, reading it for the third time. And yes, I'm being very careful with it because it's a 45-year-old book. It's never been republished or reprinted ever. And I wonder why. <laughs> I do. I wonder why. Because could it be because of the information being BS in the book? It's a good possibility. Now, here is another interview with Charles Edson. I'm not going to play this interview. Because it's over 15 minutes. I don't want this video to be too long. If you're a Bigfoot enthusiast, you're in for a treat. A video from the YouTube channel, the Sasquatch Archives. This is also from Todd Prescott's site, or from, from his YouTube channel. The Sasquatch Archives TV. Features an interview with Deputy Sheriff Charles Edson, who claims to have had multiple encounters with Bigfoot. The interview, conducted in 1979, includes alleged Bigfoot photos and plaster casts of footprints. Now, what was it John Green said about people who claim to have multiple encounters or multiple sightings? Now, that's enough to set alarm bells ringing. That's one, one thing that John Green said a few years ago. Before he passed away, obviously. I'm sure that Edson was a sincere person, but sincere people can be wrong. And sincere people also, I guess they can BS every once in a while and be tall tale tellers. He could have been a tall tale teller for all we know. Now, this is an article from a blog called SassySquatchGirl.com. Article with a Bigfoot researcher, Bigfoot in the News, number 10. When loggers mentioned strange footprints in the woods, Edson would pack up his gear after work and spend that night and the next day tracking Bigfoot. Some nights, Edson said, the creature's moans would keep him awake all night. At other times, he'd catch a whiff of Bigfoot's characteristic foul odor. Bigfoot, though, he keeps a low profile, as and is sure that Maracarara, the Karak term for Bigfoot, doesn't appear before men unless the creature is curious or angry. They hate all logging equipment because they think it is spoiling their environment, Edson said. And that's the explanation he offers for his one experience with a violent Bigfoot. Edson said he was waiting to unload a truck full of logs at the landing when this thing came down from the hills. He began beating the hood of the truck with his arms, Edson said. He didn't want me or he could have broken the window and grabbed me. Instead, Edson theorizes the creature was disturbed by the logging. And this is Edson with what appears to be a footprint cast. This was an article about his book, apparently. Logger recalls close encounter of the Bigfoot kind. I'm not going to read through this article because it's, it's, fairly, it's fairly short if you guys want to take a look at it because I am going to include all these links in the description below, as I always do. So, was Charles Edson merely a BSer, or was he a true Sasquatch experiencer? Did he have multiple, multiple sightings? I know that the Four Horsemen of Sasquatchery were very dubious of more than one report, more than one sighting of, from someone. Edson allegedly found footprints numerous times and took photographs and plaster casts of them 
Or did he hoax them? I don't know. Was Charles Edson a hoaxer? It's something we have to keep in mind. If he wasn't a hoaxer, he was at least a BSer. That's assuming that everything he supposedly came across was nothing more than tall tales. I don't know, though. You can't really, again, you cannot confirm or deny this stuff one way or the other. It's either real or it isn't. We've had Bigfoot BSers before. And we'll have Bigfoot BSers in the future. Was well, Edson one of those? We don't know and most likely we'll never know.